What a spring we are having. Hard to predict. I tell you, we have some strange things happening on our forecast here. I'll give you some information on some early morels, as well as the spotty smelt dipping, which may be heated up this weekend. I tell you, get out your smelt net. We're going to head towards Tawas right now and show you what smelt dipping is like. Well, it's Friday night. The crowds are lined up at the dock here at Tawas smelt dipping. How are you folks doing? Great. Great, are you? Yep. Well, let's see. You got any of these smelt here? Yeah, those ones are. Here. These are yours? Come on up here. Let's take a look at them. These are the first smelt of the evening we've seen. We got some, right? Oh, so let's swing over here. Oh, look at this right here. Coming in. You lost more than you got there? Yeah. Hey, that's a pretty nice one right here. Look at that. Oh, well, you've done real well. You're, you, you've been the luckiest ones well, here so far. <laughs> that's not all mine. There's three of us dipping and dumping them in there. So. What, what's your name? Jim Barrow. Where are you from? Chesney. Chesney. Okay, well, let's take a look at this net here just a second, if you don't mind. I know you're in a rush to get it back in the water, but uh, this is just a minnow type of... Oh, that's homemade, yeah. This is a homemade yeah. job. We bought the material and just made them up ourselves. Okay, and what, what he's doing here, this is what they do off the docks here at Tawas. He has a, well, I don't know, where'd you buy this, L.L. Bean? <laughs> yeah. Huh? Right in, right in the backwoods. <laughs> right in the backwoods to his homemade net. And he's... Come over here and see if we can see, O.J., if we can... Go ahead, drop it down there. And what he does is he lays it right on the bottom here. Oh, yeah. There's light you need. There, is that the light you need, yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah. Keep it up. <laughs> okay. Now, the smelter attracted here by the lights, I think, along the dock. We're in about... What is that? Six, eight feet of water? Yeah, seven feet of water, yeah. Now, we're waiting for the smelt to swim by. I don't know what the chances are right now here with the cameras. It always seems like we don't bring the best of luck, but you can't tell. Well, we have a fellow here who just came directly from the parking lot of what grocery store? Oh, oh, I see. This is covered up. He has a shopping cart that he acquired somewhere. He has a battery here. He's fishing with a two-by-four with some cables to it, and here's a switch right there. And you flip it on and off. And can you see in the water here, O.J.? Come on down and look at his net. He has his net laying on the bottom like everybody else with one exception. Go ahead, flip it on and off there a second. See that? Now, that light uh, is attracting smelt or just enabling you to see him? I would say more or less just to see him. Just to see him? I would say. You know, if this works, we're going to have a lot of people switching to your method. <laughs> I imagine there would be. How's it work so far? Pretty good. Okay. We're going to dip some right now? Yeah. You got some? Oh, hold on. We have some action. You turn the light off when the smell get in there? Yeah. Here they come. Missed. Oh, you missed. We got we got any down there? A couple? What's that? Do you have a question? Um, when's the show going to be on? This one? Right uh -huh. now? Okay, it's Friday night now, right? Okay, next Thursday it's going to be on. On all the public TV stations around the state. You ever watch Michigan Outdoors? Okay, why don't you tell the folks that this is going to be on Thursday night, and it's time for Michigan Outdoors. This is going to be on Thursday night. But, and it's time for what? Michigan Outdoors. All right. Well, Bob, we're right down here in the middle of the fracas. I mean, this you know what smelt dipping is all about. This, there are serious smelt dippers. I don't know if we've run into any yet. Have we got No, lots of good stones. <laughs> huh? Well, it's it's party time down here at Singing Bridge. But we are, there are a number of people out here who are trying. And Kathy, why don't you explain the technique that we're using? Okay, I'm going downstream here, actually, with the current. Yeah, and, and smelt are hopefully going this way. That's right. They're going up to spawn right, right. now. You're using, let's show the net. This is the most popular type of net to use right here, the wire mesh. And you did pick up a few stones. Yeah, like I said, can we cook them? Uh, no, not the stones. <laughs> but that is good because you should be skimming along the bottom. So, Kathy, we'll just keep dipping here, and there's no telling when the smelt are going to be on their way up. They're on their spawning runs, Kath. And they're going to go up here tonight. All the, all the ones that come up here are going to be spawning, and they'll lay between 20 and 70,000 eggs. Per little smelt. Per little smelt. Each one of them. Yeah. They lay them out in the water. The, the eggs are loose, and they don't lay them in a cluster. They don't put them in a bed. A group of smelt will spawn together, and the eggs will float downstream, but they're sticky, so they'll stick to the rocks and stick to the twigs and things in the water. And they'll hatch out in about three weeks. But the smelt that lay their eggs tonight will be coming back downstream towards the open water here yet tonight. On one night. That's right. And, you know, we could be dipping until 5, 6 in the morning and still get smelt. Sure. Sound like a good idea? Well. Uh-oh. <laughs> Taking on a little water here. As I say, we're in the middle of the fracas here, Kathy. <laughs> yeah, I see that. <laughs> Since when did smelt dipping become a spectator sport? 
<laughs> right now. Well, right right now. now. What for? <laughs> I'm waiting for him. <laughs> waiting for him? Well, well, somebody got something here. You did get a couple in there, too. Did you get those? Oh, no. What, are you spectators? Yeah, we're uh, we're getting ready to put on our waders. We're going to go out there and check the water temperature. Okay, it's supposed to be between 42 and 44 degrees for these little critters. Yeah. Well, yeah. What do you think it is now? You were out there. It's probably about 41 or 45. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's just a hair off. I know they're coming any minute. What are you doing? Sleeping. Well, how come this is smelt dipping time, you know? Yeah, where's the smelt? Where's the smelt? Is that the problem? Yeah, no smelt. Well, you're just waiting then. Oh, what a rowdy crowd. So what are you guys doing? What does it look like? <laughs> well, that's the story here by the campfire. Let's get on Michigan Outdoors. <laughs> Do we have some great news, Kathy? You got one. I got one. Well, let's get it out here and take a look at this trophy. Yay. You want to look at that? A real smelt, guys. Yeah. Well, Bob and Fred are, or Adam and have to split this. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Kev, go ahead and drop it in your bucket. Yeah, the run's on. Well, maybe that's a good omen here. I hope so. We haven't got a lot of smelt so far, but you know with the camera's out, I don't think we're going to. Why is that? Well, it, it just happens that way. All the I think we're going to have to put the cameras away. Okay. And we're going to do some serious smelt dip and see all if right. we can't get something for our recipe. Let's get all of them. Let's do it. Okay. Was our man, Cat Man Charlie. But that isn't what really we're going to cap this show with. You had a fish that you told me about. You said is a, is a real winner. Yeah, we got a big smell out of Grand Haven this spring. Well, you heard on the show. Uh, what did I say on the show? Uh, you said that reports were spotty on Lake Michigan and that uh, the big worms weren't really out there. So we we got this one in the evening there, and we thought we'd show it to you. You kept it in the freezer yes, until sir. now. Well, let's see it. Let's see this monster smelt. He's a little junior Eddie here. Oh, hey, look at the size of that. He that goes he goes 11 inches. He's 11 inch smelt. He's, He's got a, large teeth in him. Teeth? Let's see. Probably sort of hard to see with a close up in here, but this is a smelt. Well, he does have large teeth. He does. They're Boy, short. Yeah, he has a couple in the top there. Pretty old smelt, we figure. Wow, that's off Grand Haven, so that's kind of a hot spot? Yeah, it's been good dipping out there the last couple of years. We This season, we probably dipped about 30 gallons of them. Isn't that something? The man saves the day by having a smelt in the freezer. <laughs> now, how about that? Bigger than the catfish we caught. <laughs> it was. It was. We should pull that thing out here now. Well, that's a great smelt. Why don't you stand up there? Catfish Charlie. This is Catfish Charlie, who did his best tonight. We and tried. On it. We're going to call you Smelt Charlie from now on. Okay, that sounds good. <laughs> The opossum has an amazingly short gestation period of 13 days. How many young are generally born and how big are they? The opossum bears 16 to 17 young weighing 1 1700th of a pound. 20 would fit into a tablespoon. They climb into mama's pouch and emerge two months later about the size of mice. Mmm, <laughs> This is fried smelt, pan fried pan smelt. Pan fried smelt. Oh, boy, I tell you, they are good, Kathy. Mm. Not deep fried. A lot of your smelt recipes have called for deep frying. Mm -hmm. And this is a lot easier, and I like it. Well, this does have a, you can see, a, a breading, a rather thick crust on the outside. It isn't a heavy batter. No, absolutely not. Just a nice, thin breading. Should be Bob Garner's favorite type. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's take a look at how you put these together, Kathy. Go right ahead. This <laughs> recipe. Look at the size of those smelt. I well, can't believe them. These were the UP smelt we got oh, last year with Pete Berger. I've never seen smelt that big. And they... Oh, they're really, huge. They uh, are. They clean up nice, too. Now, they, they weren't approaching 11 inches, either. But there's some nice nine oh, filet size. So. That's right. Just about. <laughs> Seriously. Exactly. But the, the meat is so so white and, and tender. And moist. Very moist. They're not dried out at all. Well, there's the array of ingredients. Breadcrumbs and flour. You know, got a piece of wax paper because you're going to put flour on it and your breadcrumbs and mix it up. Salt and pepper. Yeah, well, this is what stage one here. Just That's with right. The flour. This is going to keep everything adhered to this smelt. Get and a couple of eggs. You mix it with two tablespoons of water. Just kind of stir it up good so that it's all broke up. You know. Why do it. you mix the water with the egg? It'll make it foamier. Hmm. If you didn't do that, it wouldn't foam much at all there. Mm -hmm. You could not add water, but it, it does stick it better. And then the final touch of breadcrumbs. Right. 
A lot easier to pour them out of a box than to try to make <laughs> your try own. Then try to mash them up. <laughs> dry them first. And, and then you need a little rack of some type. Oh, these, these are going to dry. These are actually going to, the breadcrumbs are going to dry right onto the fish. You just follow my two-year-old around. You find plenty of breadcrumbs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, roll them in, in the, the flour, flour, then in the, in the egg, egg, then in the breadcrumbs. Right. And right. the flour will dry your fish out so that the egg will stick to it, so that then the breadcrumbs will stick mm -hmm. to it. And here's the twist. Let them sit on the rack for... About an hour. An hour? Right. And it really, all of a sudden, it just dries rather quickly. And you can pick those up, and the breadcrumbs will not come off. See, so they just stay right there on the fish. Mm-hmm. And that, that holds it together better when it's in the pan frying. Now, pan, pan frying is not deep frying. It's just no, in a little bit of butter. Right. There's hardly any oil in that, butter in that at all. And it doesn't take long. One of the things with smelt, people will tend to crowd them because they're small. Mm -hmm. But even at that, because they're small, you don't want to overdo it, put too many in at one time. And one that I have eaten half of, and you can see the backbone is still in there. Smelt that are larger like this, the backbone doesn't disintegrate as much, but they do come apart. You don't want to eat the backbone in. But here we have some lemon, but I don't, I don't think this needs lemon or tartar sauce or anything. It doesn't need anything. anything. Absolutely nothing. Just good finger food. A number one. A number That's one right. recipe. This is super. That is, and I'm surprised. This tastes better than when we tried it out about a week ago. Right. Well, Why is that? Well, this a little bit longer, just a little bit longer than you don't last wanna, week. You don't want to overcook fish, but make sure you cook these sufficiently. There oh. we go, that tender white meat. Very white. Pan-fried smelts. Bob, where can our viewers get this great recipe?